Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here in our video about graphing systems of linear inequalities. We're going to be doing several of these systems as examples for you. In graphing our lines, we're going to default to the graphing by intercepts method, and then if we need to, we will rely on the slope intercept form of a line to graph our lines. My first system of inequalities here, I have three inequalities. I have 4x plus 10y is less than or equal 20. And then I have these two statements that are somewhat common that we might see in a business math class or a finite math class. x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0. I want to explore these first and then we'll come back to this first one. So if I just think about x is greater than or equal to 0 and I just think about the equal to part first, x equal to 0 is going to cut through the axis at 0. And that's actually going to be the y-axis, right? That is the equation that gives us the y-axis. So that's the equal to part. The greater than part, if I want to find x values that are greater than on this line, I would go to the right because x gets bigger toward the right. So we're going to say we need to be to the right of this line. Let's look at our next one here. We have y is greater than or equal to zero. Just think about the equal to part. So if y is equal to zero, remember that's going to cross the y axis at zero, and that's actually going to give us the x axis, right? The x axis crosses the y axis at zero. And so we get that as our line for y equals zero. Now the greater than part tells me that I need y values greater than this, which would be above this line. So anything above this line would be included. We've got that one graphed as well. Now if you look at where we must be to satisfy both of these, I think you'll see from where the arrows are pointing that we must be in quadrant 1. We can't be over here because we're on the wrong side of this vertical line. We can't be down here because we're on the wrong side of this horizontal line. We must be to the right of this line and above this line, which really puts us in quadrant 1 or because we have the equal bars, we could technically also be on the axis, right? So, but we're not going to be in quadrants two, three, or four, we can already tell. Let's go back up to our last one here. So we have four X plus 10 Y less than or equal to 20. I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite that. And we'll do just a little bit of work plotting our intercepts for that. So think about just the equal case here maybe. So what would the X intercept B. Well, the x-intercept is going to be when y is equal to 0, right? An intercept is when the other variable is 0. So that would make this term 0 out, so we would get nothing there, and we would say 4x is equal to 20. That's true when you divide by 4 on both sides. That'll be true when x is equal to 5, right? So our x-intercept is 5. Let's go ahead and plot that. And then our y-intercept, that's going to be when the other variable x is 0. And if we find that one, that would zero out the x term, and we would get 10y equals 20, dividing by 10 on both sides will give us that y equals 2, right? So we would have a y-intercept of 2. Go ahead and plot that, and now we have two points, so we can go ahead and graph our line. And if we graph going through those points, then we get something that looks like that for the equal part. Now we need to go back and look at this less than. So we have less than equal. Notice that our y coefficient is positive, so the direction will be the same as what we see here. Less than would mean below, so I would also need to be below this line that I just drew here. So now that we have all our lines drawn and all of our directions, then the question is, where is our region that satisfies all of these? Well, think about, I need to be in quadrant one, we already said from these bottom two, but I also need to be below the slanty line here, right? So I think if you think about it for a minute, you will notice that we're actually inside of this triangular region. This is where we are in quadrant one, so we satisfy the x and y greater than or equal to zero, but we are also on the correct side, which is below our slanty line that we've just drawn here. So this is our region that satisfies all of these inequalities at once. This is the solution for our system of linear inequalities. Let's go on to our next example here. So we'll go ahead and notice that we definitely have our x greater than equal zero, y greater than equal zero here. So this is telling us that we are in quadrant one again. So I am going to go ahead and actually just use the same color for these. I know I'm in quadrant one based on that. 
So the combo of both of these, I know that I must be above over here and I must be to the right of over here, but I could also be on the line. So we've got these both graphed. Let's go ahead and look at our top inequality here. X plus Y is less than or equal to six. So think about uh, graphing by intercepts. We're gonna go ahead and do this without writing much down and hopefully see if you can follow us here. So if I want to find the X intercept, that's when the Y term is zero. So if I go ahead and think about ignoring that, then I just simply get X equal to six, right? So we can go ahead and plot that intercept. And for the Y intercept, that would mean when the other term is zeroed out. And here we would get y is equal to 6. So we get intercepts of 6 for both of those. Let's go ahead and graph that. Hopefully that makes some sense and we didn't go through that too quickly for you, but I think that's a nice way to do that, right? Okay, so we also have our line there. Now, we need to graph the less than part. My y is positive, so I graph exactly the direction that I see here. Less than would be below. So I'm going to go ahead and say I need to be below this line. And I'm not going to worry too much about drawing a little arrow over here. We already said from these bottom two that we need to be in quadrant one anyway. So I really just care about the stuff that is in quadrant one. So this one is graphed with its direction as well. Let's move on to this last one here. 7x plus 14y less than equal to 56. So if I want to find the x-intercept, I zero out the y term. And I say 7x is equal to 56, and dividing both sides by 7 would give me that x is equal to 8. So I go ahead and plot 8 on the x-axis. And if I want to find the y-intercept, then that would be when I zero out the x term. And 14y equal 56, dividing by 14 on both sides, will give you that y is 4. So we'll go ahead and plot 4 on the y-axis. And that is our other point for that line. So now I have two points for that line. I can go ahead and graph that. Let's go ahead and do that. And so we have our line going through that. And now if we look at the direction here, I have a positive y term and I have a less than. So it's exactly what we see here, less than being below. So I would also need to be below the yellow line. And I'm going to focus on this area around the first quadrant. I don't need to label it over here because I'm really not going to use this space anyway. I think you can see it over here. If I need to be in quadrant one and I need to be below both of the diagonal lines that I've drawn here, so I need to be in quadrant one, but I also need to be under this green line that we first sketched. I also need to be below this yellow line that I just sketched. Then you might be able to tell we must be in this zone here of the first quadrant in order to satisfy all four of our inequalities at the same time. So here I've got another system, 8x plus 6y less than or equal to 144, x minus 2y less than or equal to negative 4, and x greater than or equal to 0. Notice here that I don't have both x greater than or equal to 0, y greater than or equal to 0, so this does not tell me quadrant 1 by itself. This x greater than or equal to 0, if I cut through the x-axis at 0, remember that is the y-axis, so this is really only telling me for sure that I need to be on one side or on the other of the y-axis. So the greater than would tell me I need to be to the right, of course, but there's no y greater than equal to zero, so we're not also above the horizontal axis. So we're in quadrants one or four for sure, but not just quadrant one. Okay, this one is done. Let's go to the top one here. If I have 8x plus 6y is less than or equal 144, let's find the x-intercept first. So go ahead and zero out the y. That will give you 8x equal to 144. And if we divide both sides by 8, we take a second to do that, we'll get that x is equal to 18. So we will go ahead and plot at 18 on the x-axis. I've got my uh, boxes going by 2 here because my numbers are a little bit bigger now. And that's something you can certainly do if your intercepts are very large. Don't feel like you need to count your boxes by 1 every time you label an axis. Let's go ahead and find our y-axis, right? So zero out the x term. 6y equal to 144. If we divide 144 by 6, then we'll get the y-intercept is actually 24. So if we go ahead and plot 24, which is way up here on the y-axis, then we can go ahead and plot our line through those two points. 
Okay, there's our line through those two points. Now we need to do the shading. I have a positive Y term, so I shade exactly the direction I see here. Less than would be below the line. So I'm going to be below this line. It could be anywhere on the right side of my vertical blue line here, right? That's all we know so far. Okay, so this one is finished as well. Let's look at X minus 2Y is less than or equal to negative 4 last one here so if I go ahead and think about my x-intercept so I zero out the y term and I think x equal negative 4 x equals negative 4 is going to be to the left on the axis so we go to negative 4 on the x-axis and plot that and then for the y-intercept zero out the x term notice the sign here so negative 2y equal negative 4 if you divide both sides by negative 2 you'll actually get a positive 2 so we get a positive 2 there for our intercept. All right, we'll go ahead and graph our line here. So just our line, no shading part, looks like that. And we need to choose which side of the line to shade. So think about now, we've got a negative coefficient in front of the y, so this is going to be opposite what we see here. So think about this as a greater than instead of a less than, which means we would shade above so we want to be above this yellow line that i just drew so i need to be to the right of the blue line below the green line and above the yellow line here you can probably tell that, that puts us in this triangular region we are to the right of the axis but we're below this line here and above this other line that we need to be here. So this is our region that is the solution for all of these inequalities at the same time. Let's look at these here, something a little bit different. We have 2x plus 5y is greater than or equal to 30, and we have 2 less than or equal x less than or equal 10. Let's go ahead and look at this compound inequality first. So one part of this says, if I just think about equal to, 2 equals x. And the other part of this, ignoring the less than, says x equal to 10. So we want to graph both of these lines. x equal to 2 cuts the x-axis at 2. So that would be a vertical line through x equals 2. And this one cuts the x-axis at 10. So we would be a vertical line through 10. So those are just the equal to parts. Now think about what's going on here. This is really, this compound inequality is saying x is between 2 and 10, so I think we have a good idea of what's going on here. But you can see here the bigger side is toward x, so we need to shade bigger side of 2, and here the smaller side pointing toward x between x and 10 says as far as 10 goes we need to be shading to the left to the smaller side of 10. So we know we're in between these two vertical lines. Let's take a look at this 2x plus 5y is greater than or equal to 30. If I go about plotting my intercepts, so the x-intercept I would zero out the y term. 2x equal to 30, dividing by 2 on both sides will give us that x equals 15. So we could plot 15 on the x-axis. And then y-intercept I would zero out the x term and say 5y equal to 30, dividing by 5 on both sides will give us that y is 6. So go ahead and graph that there. Now if we go ahead and graph our line, our line needs to go through those points. And I go back here and I look at a positive y coefficient. It tells me that I do exactly what I see here, and this greater than means I would be above that line. So it would be above the line. Now I need to be between these, right? So I'm going to focus on in here. So I need to be between the vertical lines and above the slanty line here. So what you might notice about our region that's different than the others that we've done so far, we don't really have a top, right, that's keeping us boxed into a little zone here. We have to be above this diagonal line, and I have to be on one side of this vertical line, and I have to be on one side of this vertical line. But really what's going on is that... Um, I don't have any top, so I can really be in here anywhere, but I'm going to keep going up forever, right? These two lines will just keep extending upward, and as long as I'm in between them and above this green line that I've drawn, then I'm good. And this type of a region here is actually called an unbounded region. 
It's not bounded. It goes on without end in some direction. What we've been doing before, something like our last example, this was a bounded region, right? It's fenced on all sides in some way by our graphs. So this is a bounded region. It doesn't go on forever in any direction. Here in our last one that we just did, this is an unbounded region. That'll make a big difference having a bounded versus an unbounded region if you're working toward doing things like finding a maximum or a minimum in a region. Let's look at our final example here. We'll see if it's bounded or unbounded. We have x greater than equals zero, y greater than equals zero. That should be sending red flags off in your brain right now. This is telling us right away we need to be in quadrant one or on the axes that are bordering quadrant one. So we'll go ahead and section that off. So let's get to our others. We've already plotted these. We are to the right of this axis and above this axis, yeah? Let's move on to our other inequalities here. I've got 2x plus 5y greater than or equal to 20. Let's find the x-intercept. We'll zero out the y term. That'll give us 2x equal to 20. Divide both sides by 2. That'll give you x is 10. So we'll go ahead and plot an x-intercept of 10. Finding the y-intercept, zero out the x term. 5y equal to 20. Divide by 5 on both sides would give that y is equal to 4. So our y-intercept is 4. And let's go ahead and plot our line through those points and decide where we shade. So notice I have a positive y coefficient, so I do exactly the direction that is here. That means I shade greater than would be above the line. So I'm going to be above the green line here. This is probably the part that I care about. This down here isn't in quadrant one, so I maybe don't need to label above down here or over here. Again, I'm focused already in quadrant one, so we'll just label over here in this range. Uh, 10x plus 5y is greater than or equal to 60. Let's move on to this last one here. Finding the x-intercept, I would zero out the y term. 10x equal to 60, dividing both sides by 10 would give you six for an x-intercept. And then the y-intercept, I would zero out the x term. And so 5y equal to 60, divide both sides by 5, would give you a y value of 12. So our y-intercept is 12. We'll go ahead and do that. And that gives us a line that looks something like that. And now we need to decide a side of the line to shade. So I have a positive y coefficient here. That means we graph exactly what we see and greater than would mean above. So for this one, I also want to be above my yellow line that I have here. So I need to be above both of these diagonal lines means I need to be above this piece here in quadrant one and above this piece here in quadrant one. But now I also need to stay above the axis here, right? I can't go below the axis. So once I get to this intercept here, I need to not go below this line. And once my yellow line that I drew last goes past this axis, I still need to stay in quadrant one, right? So I still need to stay on this side of the axis. So what we really have is all of this region out here that is above these lines, above the axis to the side of this axis, but it's going to be going off forever in this direction. As we go up and to the right, we'll be able to keep shading more and more region. It's not closed off. There's no top to it. There's no right side of it. We just sort of have this boundary along the bottom and the left side, I guess, if that makes sense. So we'll go ahead and make a note on this example as well. This is an unbounded region for our solution. Okay, everyone, hopefully we've given you lots of practice graphing your systems of linear inequalities and figuring out if you have a bounded or an unbounded region. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video.